Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me. And welcome to this small, I hope it's gonna be small, Astro Chat episode all about, now I think I'm gonna call this Saturn Optimism and the Stockdale Paradox. So if you feel like one of my rambly videos, I'm gonna try and be efficient. Let's see how I go. Stick around, we're gonna, this will be relevant for you. Who is this relevant for? Okay, this is relevant for those of you who have got strong Saturn in your chart. So maybe Saturn is your Ascendant Lord, Saturn is your Atma Karaka, Saturn is aspecting your Sun or your Moon, or it's on your Rahu Ketu axis, or it's conjunct a lot of planets. Okay, or you just resonate with Saturn, you just like the planet. Okay, that qualifies as well. Um, so if you've got quite a Saturnian kind of a chart, this will be relevant. This will also be relevant possibly for those of you who read for other people. Okay, so maybe you read charts, you read astrology charts, human design charts, maybe you're a tarot reader, maybe you are psychic medium, trans channel, channel, any of those kind of things. So if you do this kind of work, this could be an interesting video. There might be some discussion points in here that will really get you thinking. So I wanted to talk about James Stockdale. I'll put his picture on the screen and we're gonna see who this person is and what he's all about. So James Stockdale, it says here on Wikipedia, was a United States Navy Vice Admiral, Admiral, I always have trouble with that word, Admiral, an aviator who was awarded the Medal of Honor in the Vietnam War, during which he was a prisoner of war for over seven years. Seven years, there's the flag. Okay, so this is also relevant for those of you who are in a Sadi Sadi period. I should have said this at the start. So maybe if you are Pisces moon, you're Aquarius moon, Capricorn moon, this will be important for you. Because when I first heard about this guy and it said over seven years, he was a prisoner of war, I kind of, my brain flagged and I'm like, oh, that's a Sadi Sadi period. I have to check this guy out. So, so I did check him out and it turns out he's got in his chart an exalted Saturn, which is fantastic. We know that the wisdom I'm about to read out from him comes directly from Saturn. Okay, that is what I believe. So the wisdom that he accumulated while he was a prisoner of war. So now he's a prisoner of war in Vietnam. He's in a confined space. He was actually, I believe, tortured. Uh, you know, he, he went through a very grim, horrible time. Horrible, right? Really, really, really bad. And when he came out of that time, he was interviewed. And the interviewer wanted to know, how come you made it out? Uh, and the interviewer asked, so the interviewer asked, which prisoners, you know, he asked Stockdale, tell me which prisoners didn't make it out of Vietnam. Stockdale replied, oh, that's easy. The optimists. He says, oh, they were the ones who said, we're going to be out by Christmas. And Christmas would come and Christmas would go. Then they'd say, we're going to be out by Easter. And Easter would come and Easter would go. And then Thanksgiving. And then it would be Christmas again. And they died of a broken heart. This is a very important lesson, he says. You must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end, which you can never afford to lose, with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. And I thought that bit of wisdom is just fascinating. They call this bit of wisdom the Stockdale Paradox. And it's a paradox because what he's saying is that on the one hand, you've got to be optimistic, but then on the other hand, you've got to be a realist. You know, you've got to have your eyes wide open and look at the reality of your life, whatever that is. And to me, this whole thing is really so fascinating. And it also got me thinking about a young lady called Natasha Campush. Now, Natasha Campush, I haven't 
looked at her chart or any of that. Um, we've got her up here on Wikipedia. It says here, Natasha Kampusch is an Austrian author and former talk show host. Yes, well, maybe that's what she's known for now. But what I know her for is that we've got here, she was abducted and held in a secret cellar by her kidnapper, Wolfgang, and I'm not going to try that surname, it's too difficult to, for me to pronounce, but Wolfgang, someone or other, I'll put it on the screen, for more than eight years. Okay, so she was abducted. She was in a tight, confined space for eight years. And she's really fascinating as well, just like Stockdale, because when she was interviewed later about the wisdom and the things she learned and gained from that experience, she said that, well, I ran out of one prison and into the prison of society. And I thought that comment was really, really fascinating. And one of the things that all of this shows me is that everybody's life has got some kind of prison-like quality, okay? But it's just that everybody, like the bars are slightly different for everybody. That's kind of how I see life. And I see life that way because I've done my Jupiter Mahadasha. I'm into my Saturn Mahadasha now and everything is very real for me, you know? So I see that everybody's, I see that everybody is living in some kind of prison. It's just that the bars are slightly different. So, okay, I'll give you an example. So my life, you know, I have a very simple, small space in which I live. Is it prison like, well, I don't know, but then see, I, every year I get to go to Australia. So, you know, my prison includes flying to Australia, right, <laughs> every year um, and maybe a little stopover somewhere or, you know, so I, 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 get, I get around. But then that's all that my life is, if you know what I mean. I'll give you another example. A friend of mine, he um, did great on the stock market. I've spoken about him on the channel before as an example. Second Lord in the fifth house. This is that this is that placement where you can win big money. And he did. He invested. He took a gamble on the stock market. He's now worth tens of millions of dollars. He doesn't have to work again. And you know, you'd think, well, how is he in a prison? But it's really interesting. Uh, when I was in Australia for those three years, I was on a WhatsApp group with those friends and I texted just something about, you know, people were talking about their day. I said something about, oh, I'm out having a coffee with some friends. And he texted a really interesting message to the whole group. He said, God, I wish I could go and do that. And it was really odd. And there were some odd kind of messages that would come from him that I used to just be puzzled by. but. You know, every now and then he would kind of say that, like, I don't have any freedom. And uh, even though he's got all these tens of millions of dollars, there's something about the setup of his life where, for various reasons, he's not a free man. You know, and this whole concept of, um, it's kind of like your everyday life that you can't change easily. It's like that forms your prison. So even though he's got tens of millions of dollars or whatever, and I might look at that and go, wow, that's freedom. But it's actually not, interestingly. Uh, you know, and that's how I kind of see things. It's kind of like everybody's in some sort of prison, but the bars are slightly different for everybody. And what I find is that the spiritual path is your way out. The spiritual path you know, and this is Lester Levinson type wisdom. He says, when you convert all of your desires in the desire into the desire to be free, well, now that's when you're on the right path. And I really agree with that. And the reason at the start of this video, I said that it would be good for if you're a reader to be here and, and to have a look at all of this is because when I observed this piece of wisdom here by James Stockdale, for me, that, that was just like, oh, that, that, that's my whole life I deal with this, you know, and, and especially in a reading, especially like, for example, in a pick a card reading. One of the things that I'm always consciously trying to do there is I'm consciously trying to lead a, a person back to hope or back to self-empowerment or back to, hey, it's not so bad, let's feel good about this, you know, back to optimism, right? Uh, but here he is, this man who knows, he's saying that, well, it's the optimists who die. And 
that is I get it that's true you know fantasy thinking is not a good thing I mean maybe we could um, change the word optimist there and, and say oh you know instead of it being optimists maybe it's the fantasy thinkers they're the ones that die and so these are the people who say for example they've got their heart set on someone you know they think well that person's my twin flame or that person my soulmate and oh it's all going to be wonderful well but it's it may, it may not be you know and a lot of people who are in this twin flame thing they're married with kids and there's, there's, you know, we've got here, you know, they do, the discipline to confront the most brutal reality, brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. It's like, yeah, sometimes people are just escaping in a fantasy, whereas actually they need to be brought down to reality. And if, you know, this thing of if you really want to change your life, and improve your life or go somewhere well you've got to deal with what is first don't ignore that at you know in exchange for some fantasy you can drain years of your life into a fantasy and go nowhere and that can be that's the dream that's Pisces that's the 12th house you can drain a lot of life into uh, dreams and optimism and fantasy thinking and all that kind of thing it's a very difficult balance to get a reading right you know in in a, a pick a card it's hard because I've got 10 to 15 minutes with you and it's like I'm just I just do what I can to just some feel-good thing you know I mean I don't, I don't go too deep there but when I do a big reading with you an astrology reading an hour an hour and a half now in that space we can go into karmic lords we can take a look uh, what is what are the what is the brutal facts of your current reality we can take a look at those things we can have a look at your karmic setup and see all right what have you come here to do you know and uh, that can be very useful and very productive to, to take a look at those things but yeah I'm just looking at the time and this video has a little bit of break in there as well uh, whoops sorry I should have charged the battery today I've had one of those days guys where you know well, it's actually been a good day. I'm looking back at my day and it's not too bad. I got all my work done. But let me know how you got on it in the comments below. I hope this has been some interesting food for thought and just, just something to get you balancing out your optimism with reality. Okay, we're going to do both. It's not just one. So when you, when you next click on a pick a card, Take care because that's very often that's just a, a, a nice cozy little environment that's giving you something very lovely but the reality might be something very different. And you know, you need to you need to be aware of both. All right guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to seeing you next time.